coming up on today's episode of the AMA Drone Report. Drone Champion League flies multi-rotor manned aerobatic drone. A judge in Michigan rules in favor of drone operators. And the AMA sends a formal letter to Secretary Elaine Chow. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world. In partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. I'm Sophie Herlock. A drone capable of carrying a person and performing aerobatics has been built and flown by Drone Champions AG as a way to promote its Drone Champions League video game. And while the aircraft is designed to carry a person, that person will not be the pilot as the aircraft is intended to be flown from the ground. The so-called Big Drone is built around an all-carbon aerodynamically fared frame with six arms supporting two coaxial rotors for a total of 12 rotors. The drone can perform loops, rolls, and other stunts that will look familiar to anyone who has watched an air show. Drone Champions founder Herbert Wyrather stated, We have developed and built the first ever manned aerobatic drone with the vision to create a brand new future racing experience and to recruit drone pilots through DCL the game. Everyone should have the opportunity to fly, and DCL the game provides the starting point. Now let's take a quick look at news making rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. It's time for today's Drone Minute. The model aviation community is continuing to let their voices be heard on the FAA's remote ID NPRM by the thousands. With less than two weeks left to respond, there's currently over 19,000 comments on the NPRM, the vast majority of which disagreeing with the FAA's thinking on the issue. If you would like to let the FAA know how you feel on the remote ID NPRM, the deadline to comment is March 2nd. Additionally, you can encourage others to comment by printing off a flyer created by the AMA, which gives instructions on how to comment. You can find that flyer at amablog.modelaircraft.org slash amagov. The American Bar Association House of Delegates passed a resolution related to the use of drones at its 2020 mid-year meeting in Austin, Texas. The resolution directs the ABA to urge federal, state, local, territorial, and tribal governments to protect real property interests including common law trespass and privacy rights with respect to any statute, ordinance, regulation, administrative rule, order, or guidance pertaining to the development and usage of unmanned aircraft systems over private property. DJI has developed what they call drone-to-phone remote identification, which would work like an electronic license plate for drones. It shows a drone's location, altitude, speed, and direction, as well as an identifier like a serial number or registration number and the location of the pilot. DJI's system uses an ASTM international standard and off-the-shelf technology to send this information directly from a drone to a commonly available smartphone. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. After more than a year in the making, the challenge to a drone ordinance passed in Genesee County, Michigan, has resulted in what's being described as a huge win for drone operators. In a recent action granted a permanent injunction against the county precluding enforcement of their ordinance that disallowed the use or possession of drones in county parks. The injunction was sought out by a coalition of drone operators in Michigan after one of their own was handcuffed detained, and had both his drones and all electronics confiscated for legally flying in a Genesee County Park back in December of 2018. The drone operators formed the Michigan Coalition of Drone Operators and brought suit against the county regarding their ordinance. Now, nearly three months after hearings on the lawsuit concluded, the decision is final. The state law specifically preempting all local ordinance on drones was found to be the rule of law. The AMA sent U.S. Department of Transportation Secretary Elaine Chow a letter to address her recent statement regarding UAS and remote identification in which she failed to take the modeling community into account. In this letter, the AMA notes, 
The FAA's proposed remote ID rule is overly complicated, potentially expensive, difficult, and in many cases impossible for modelers to comply with. If implemented as is, the rule will be extraordinarily burdensome for the model aviation community and will disincentivize participation in the hobby. We have already seen a demonstrative drop in membership and participation in the hobby with the mere proposal of the remote ID rule. The proposal to change the current UAS registration rule and require model aircraft owners to register each of their model aircraft separately is unnecessary and constitutes an extreme overreach by the federal government. All model aircraft flown under AMA's community-based program remain within the visual line of sight of the operator, making it simple and straightforward to identify the pilot. If the proposal to register model aircraft individually goes into effect as is, AMA's 180,000 members would be forced to register about 1.62 million aircraft at a cost of $8.1 million. And that wraps up our show for today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. For more information on the exciting hobby drone world, head over to modelaircraft.org. I'll see you tomorrow.